What's going on, 49er faithful, 49er fan, 49er gang? It's your boy Dion back here, man, with another video. So definitely starting off, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can keep yourself up to date on any and everything San Francisco 49ers. And with that being said, let's get right on into it, man. So I went ahead and I told y'all I was going to give y'all videos on our divisional opponents. So... I went ahead and gave y'all a video about the Rams. I went ahead and gave y'all about the Cardinals. Now, we're going to touch on our biggest divisional opponent, the Seattle Seahawks. Now, we went ahead and we split with them last year. We won one. We lost one. We lost, uh, you know, at home. But we won in their house, which I can't be mad about that, man. You got to love it. So... We have to uh, make sure that we keep things going. But this is how they draft looks. So, in the first round, man, they drafted the kid Jordan Brooks, linebacker out of Texas Tech. Um, kid had three sacks, but he had 20 tackles for a loss. Now, watch the film on this kid. This kid's actually pretty amazing, man. He's, he's a sure tackler, and this motherfucker gets in the backfield quick. So, uh, as they have done in the past, they do like to push people out. So, this guy is a Mike. He's a Mike linebacker. So I'm going to tell you right now, Bobby Wagner, you'll be the next person. You'll be the last. I think he's the last piece of the Legion of Boom that's still there. And I guarantee you, Bobby Wagner going to be gone. They push him out the door. This kid come in and show up and show out. They'll push Wagner out the door to save himself some money. That's the unfortunate thing about the league. They get younger and they get cheaper, you know, rather than continuing to pay guys who are going to do good things for them. You know, you got to give Bobby Wagner a little bit of respect, man. That man has been there all that time, and he's still a consummate professional. He still does good work. Can't can't be uh, knocking Bobby. I guess he's he's he's, but he's a, he's he's on the clock now. With this kid, he's he's actually really good. So that helps him improve their defense. And then uh, in the second round, they get this kid Dale Daryl Taylor, uh, edge rusher from Tennessee. Pretty good pickup. Watch the tape on this kid. Um, He's definitely, you know, uh, great off the edge. He's a perfect replacement for uh, Jadavion Clowney. And he's going to cost him a hell of a lot less money. Because Clowney wanted 20 mil, man. And now he didn't have to drop his number and figure. Because ain't nobody willing to give him that bread. You know why? Because he's injury prone. When you're injury prone, they ain't trying to give you big money on long-term contracts. Because they don't know how long you're going to be there. The money that you get from a contract is basically contingent upon your services that you will future provide that you will provide in the future should i say um but the kid off the edge you know daryl taylor man he shit eight and a half sacks ten tfls four passes defense a fumble recovery and a forced fumble they made bad numbers for a senior year man or a junior year definitely so man that that's that that's another guy we're gonna have to keep our eye on man they are building that defense up i have to give them credit for that they got this kid damian lewis he's a guard out of lsu um, they do need help on their line. Their O-line has always been the bane of their existence when it comes to Seattle. Um, they haven't really had problems otherwise, but they, they definitely need that line to be right, man, because you got to protect somebody like Russell. Russell can't be out there running around all day, all night, trying to, you know, extend the play 50 million yards because, you know, running left, running right, running up, running down, and doing all the things that he does because y'all can't get that damn line right. So... They got him some good help, man. You know, he's a good guard. And he's very good at pass protection from what I watched and what I saw. Um, he's all right with run blocking, but not, not spectacular. But pass pro, not too bad. Definitely, definitely so. So, next guy we got up. Um, they get this kid, Colby Parkinson, out of Stanford. 48 receptions, 589 yards, 12.3 yards per catch. Um, he only, you know, he had one TD, but... Um, the dude is a red zone threat, as far as I can see. He's definitely a very big red zone threat, so you got to be a little mindful of that, man. You know, you get a guy with a big body, gets in that end zone area, and he, he can make some plays. He, he did all right. He didn't look too bad. You know, he's no George Kittle, but, but then again, there isn't a tight end in our division that's anywhere near George Kittle's level. There's not a tight end in football near no George Kittle's level. Um, you know, but he definitely, yeah, he's... He's going to be their receiving tight end to make sure that they can keep things going because they had a little bit of an issue kind of running through tight ends and running through running backs last year, which was flat out ridiculous for them. Um, so then next four, next round, round four, they go ahead and get DJ Dallas running back out of the U 
and you know it. <laughs> Shout out to all the U fans out there, man, because uh, the U is a very has a very storied history of producing some Hall of Famers, um, and definitely uh, th this kid is, is is spectacular, man. 693 yards, 6, point, six yards per carry, um, 8 touchdowns, 14 catches, 140 yards, 10 yards per carry, and 2 TDs. The kids break tackles. He has great speed. He's great out of the backfield. He's a dual threat running back. I mean, they had to, you got to remember, man, they ran through running backs like water last year. They were getting injured left and right, man. So they went and got Marshawn, Marshawn came to them off the couch to try to help him out in this year you know what i'm saying in this last year so that tells you they needed somebody viable to be out there to be able to do the things to be able to take a little bit of pressure off russ man and this kid he's definitely well worth every penny man he's the fourth round pick but uh by all accounts looking at his uh his tape and the things that he did shit, he should have been first or second round but running backs aren't valued anymore they devalue them in so many different ways it's very unfortunate but this kid, he'll definitely be pretty good in the NFL, man. We're going to have to be real good. You know, Ken Law going to have to get up in there and make sure he he's, you know, good on the run stuff. Him and DJ Jones going to be up in there trying to take this kid down. And he breaks tackles, man. He's a sure tackler. So that definitely helped him improve. I can guarantee you that much. So then we got this kid, Alton Robinson. Uh, he's another edge rusher out of Syracuse. He looks good. He's one of those quick twitch guys. He's he's more of a fast dude off the edge, you know. He's probably a situational pass rusher. I don't see him being a continual guy as far as that's concerned. Um, I'd say he probably will be uh, definitely one of those guys that they'll bring in here and there, and they'll bring him in slowly, you know what I mean? Sorry about oh, you good. You good, bro. Yeah, so... I think they'll bring him in slowly, and they'll probably have him in in situational things. They're not going to have this dude starting. He doesn't look like he's going to be that guy. He's probably just, you know, one of those dudes that can get in there. He's fast. The next thing you know, he's on the sidelines. He's probably more of a rotational depth piece. I don't think he's going to be a starter. Um, let's see here. Then they draft this kid, Freddie Swain, a wide receiver out of Florida. Now, this is going to be probably their slot receiver. If you know uh, anything about Seattle, they don't have a problem with receivers. They got DK Metcalf. They got Tyler Lockett. And Lockett can run routes and take the top off of a defense, and so can DK. But they needed a slot guy, and this guy fits the bill perfectly. And I say that because I watched his tape, and that's what he was doing in Florida, man. He was definitely running around. He was making plays. I mean, you don't get to where he was you know, just kicking it and doing bullshit. I mean, 38 catches, 517 yards, 13.6 yards per catch, and seven TDs? Hey, man, this shit. <laughs> then the solid numbers. And that sounds like that, that coming from the slot? That day. <laughs> you put that shit up in the NFL, man, you get yourself paid eventually. So I think he's a very dynamic receiver. Definitely, definitely a great pickup. Always confusing when you have great numbers and figures, how you wind up sliding. You know what I'm saying? He's pretty quick on the post routes, though. I can tell you that much. His post routes are nasty. He, he run them post route from the slot. He get your ass if you, you know, get caught looking in that backfield somehow um, as a DB. But I have to say, and then he's got kick return and punt return ability as well. So that gives you a little bit of a chance to take a little more off of anybody else on the squad you would have had to do that with possibly a Tyler Lockett or something like that. Now you got a guy you can put back there in punt return, kick return, probably pair him with DJ, and, you know, you got yourself a viable threat. Then they had this uh, uh, seventh-round tight end, uh, Steven Sullivan. Now, I didn't really look at any tape on him. I didn't have a chance to. But what I can say about Steven Sullivan is just uh, based off the sheer numbers, he's going to be a blocking tight end. You're not going to catch this dude coming out, to, you know, coming out trying to catch anything. When they have rundowns and they need a blocking tight end, they will bring him in. That will be his specialty. That is what he will do. And I can guarantee you that's just how that's going to work out. So for, for me as a whole, Seattle didn't have too bad of a draft. I can't say that they got worse. They definitely got better. That kid, I have to say the draft pick that, that intrigues me the most for them is that kid DJ Dow. That, 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 
That is a nasty little running back. That motherfucker going to be cold when he get in the NFL. I give him that. So they did improve. Getting the guard to be able to help to protect Russell, smart move. Great job by the Seattle Seahawks on their draft. Um, they did very well to be able to pick up a couple of players to make sure that, you know, they continually improve the team. Once again, I'm going to say this, as I have said for the other two teams in our division, did they get better than the 49ers? Not at all. Because while y'all drafted a guard out of LSU, we went and got an all-pro tackle for nothing. Peanuts. For just nothing. A fifth and third? Come on, man. Shit. Trent Williams was definitely fetching more than that. And he probably was fetching at least a first and whatnot. But then, you know, after a while, you get things and trade becomes uh, a little bit harder. But what I will say is, is that we definitely made everything, uh, you know, as, as, as great of a draft as we could have with the five picks that we did pick up. Seattle had a pretty good draft. They filled themselves some needs and some holes. What I will tell you is that did they go ahead and get better than the 49ers? Nope. They still got a better line. Still have a better tight end. I have to say they probably have two two viable receivers, but with us drafting uh, Brandon Ayuk and us having Debo Samuel and having KB and having Jalen Hurd and getting Juwan Jennings, you know what I'm saying? Having Trent Taylor on the comeback on the men. And I heard Jalen Hurts healthy. And he's out there looking like a beast and he's going to be nasty. I have to say, there's just not a team in the division that seems to be able to do it. They really can't fuck with us like that. But did they improve? Yes. So will they be a harder test next year? Yes. If that kid DJ Dallas is anything like what I saw on tape, yeah, we, we we really, DJ Jones going to have his damn hands full. So is Javon, and so is D, and so is Nick. Because that, 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 out of all their draft picks, that one scares me the most. So much respect to the Seahawks for everything that they've done over the years and how hard it was to tear that damn crown away from them. I know that people usually count out the people who go to the Super Bowl because they rarely make it back. But I can tell you right now, we're going back. We're going to make it back, and I can guarantee you we will be the victors this time around. So that's my video for y'all. Any Seahawks fans watching, much respect to the squad. I love Russell. Russell's a great quarterback, definitely top three. Um, and y'all have yourselves a wonderful and blessed day, and continue to keep going, man. Have fun. Live life. Get out and breathe some fresh air. And don't let nothing stop you, man. This coronavirus is going to be gone in a minute. And we'll be back to life as normal. Y'all stay blessed and peace.